In the last video, we worked on building this form. And right now our form looks like this. We have all the structure of it, but we have no validation. So what I want to do is I want to start improving this form so that it's harder for users to give us data that isn't going to be useful to us. So the first problem that I want to solve is I want to make it so that certain fields have to be filled out before you, before you send the data to the server. So right now, I haven't done this yet in our form, and I'm going to do that, but you can see that I've marked this out. It's pretty common on the web for people to put uh, an asterisk next to a field name. And so when I don't have one, it's a signal, well, I, I, you know, this one's optional. I've gone a little bit further and I've added the text th to say that this is optional. You could go even further. You could put required beside this. So you're helping your users figure out, okay, which one of these fields do you have to fill out? So how do we go about this? How do I say that the first name is a required field? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find the first name input element and I'm I'm going to I'm going to say that this is required. That's all I have to do. So I'm going to do that for first name. I'm going to do it for last name. I'm going to do it for student ID. So any of the data that you're going to need in order for your application to function, you want to make it required. If there's anything that you can live without, I would suggest that you reduce as much as you can the amount of information that the user has to enter. So um, let's say we need to have the phone number. Oh, let's say the phone number is not required, so I'm just going to leave it off. So how do you say that you don't do uh, required equals false? That won't work. You have to just say this required is not there. Uh, street address required city required province uh, province we don't have to we, I mean we could say it's required but because we've already selected one of these for it I'm not going to bother postal code is required and the uh, appointment time but again I've chosen one of them so I'm going to indicate it here but I'm not going to I'm not going to force it so if I save this my form's going to look like this and um, because I've said it's required, if I try and submit this form, you're going to see that it's the browser is going to pa pause and say, "Well, like this, this, uh, this, this field, you can't submit this form. You have to fill this field out. This field is is invalid because the data in it was required." So let's do let's do these little red asterisks over here. Okay, so. What I'm going to do in order to make those is I'm I'm just going to add an extra star in front of the first name. So if we go over here, you'll see that I now have a star here. And that's okay, right? You might be happy with that. But you might say to yourself, you know what? I I really want um it you know, I want it to stand out. I want it to be red. So what you can do if you're using you can do this in CSS. All we have to do is set the color equal to something like red. But if you look at the if you look at the utility functions that are available in the CSS for something like Bootstrap, you'll see that they have colors. And you could say if you want something to be red, you just have to put um, some you put the text uh, the class to be text danger. So text danger would give me red with this. Uh, so let's let's do that here. So I want to make this asterisk. I want to make it red, but not the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it in a span and I'm going to say that the class is equal to text danger like that. I'll copy that so I can do it in a few other places. So if we go back over here, here it is right now. If I save this over here, now when I come back, it's red. So it just stands out a little bit more. So let's do the same thing in last name, student ID, um, what other, which other ones are required? Email address, street address, we'll leave phone number alone, street address, city and I'm gonna do this just because I want to help my user visually know okay these are the pieces that that I have to put in 
province postal code website will say is optional and appointment time they need to do so we'll throw that in here too and I'll save this and it looks like this so that that looks better that's good okay so I think it's kind of nice to also you know it, show how to do this kind of thing like how can you put the word optional down here like this the if you go back again in there's different ways to do this but if you're doing it in if you're using um, something like bootstrap if I go back to the forms they have um, they have a way to do I think they call it help text help text is like extra information you could put below or beside one of your things so I'm gonna use it to put the word optional there but you can see for example on a password field they're giving you information about what um, what you're allowed to put in there so for us what we want to do is um, I want to be able to say that the phone number is optional okay I want to throw that down here so if I look for phone number, here's my phone number. I've got a label, I've got an input control, and then below this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say small class equals, this is form text, and it's text muted. In other words, it's sort of lighter in color. And I'm gonna say optional. Save that, and now just down below here, it, it says this is optional. And I'll do the same thing for uh, the URL. So my URL, I have a label, I have an input element, and then just below that, I'm gonna paste in and say that this is also optional. So they have a bit, the ability to uh, leave it blank if they don't wanna use it. Okay, that's pretty good. So we've now said that if you want to submit this form, the only way you're going to be allowed to submit this form is if you fill out these pieces. Uh, okay, so let's go further. Let's think about what other things we could do to help the user or what, what kinds of mistakes could the user make. So first name and last name. One of the things that you might be tempted to do here is you might say, well, um, I'm going to help the user because I'm going to say that a user, that a first name is, you know, only needs to be, well, like my first name is Dave or David, let's say. So you might say, well, that's about how long a name is, right? And the problem is that there are names, lots of people have names that are much longer than this. So you might say, okay, well, maybe a name is um, 20 letters. And so you think, well, I'm going to write a regular expression and I'm going to say that this field, you know, the, the maximum size that this field can be is 20 or 25. Well, as soon as you do that, somebody's going to come along to your system and they're going to have a name that's longer than that and they're going to be upset because they can't enter their name. So what I would suggest to you is if you don't need to put anything on here, don't. There's a really great article if you um, want to read about it. Uh, in 2010, Patrick McKenzie wrote it, uh, Falsehoods Programmers Believe About Names. And he had 40 things that he listed that people believe to be true about names but aren't necessarily true. So he goes into lots of these different ones, but it has to, you know, to do with things like how long is a name? And he says, you know, well, if you look at a name like Picasso's name, for example, um, try and, you know, make sure you're, could your form handle a name with spaces in it? Could your form handle a name with uh, non-ASCII characters in it, with accents in it? Uh, on and on it goes. And there's all sorts of different, uh, all sorts of different things that people don't think about. And then when somebody comes along and they start entering in these names in your form, suddenly, you know, it, it breaks and it won't work anymore. So for mine, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to say, I'm going to let them just enter the text for their first name and their last name. And uh, I'm not going to try and limit them. But the student ID is different. So if we if we take a look at the student ID, we, we could actually do something here to improve the situation for the student ID. So student ID is, um, has to be, let's say that our student ID has to be between eight and nine characters, and these are going to be all digits. So it's not hard for us to write a regular expression for this. We could say, 
I'm going to write a regular expression pattern for this, and I'm going to say that you are allowed to do 0 to 9, and you're allowed to do uh, 8 or 9 characters. So let's say that there are two different systems, old, old student numbers and newer student numbers, and uh, it's allowed to be 8 or 9 long. So this, this is going to be good because it's going to mean that when we, when we try and enter our data, it's going to do, it's not only going to say, is it required, but instead of being able to just type in A, B, C, D, it's now, you're going to have to type in something that's going to match this regular expression for it, for it to pass. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to give, um, similar to what we just did with the option a second ago, I'm going to put another div down here and I'm going to say that this is invalid feedback and I'm going to put an error message. So if you get this wrong, I'm going to say you need to enter an eight or nine digit student ID. I'll save this. So you can see that nothing is showing down here, right? Uh, Dave, Humphrey, and I type ABC. And if I try and submit this form, uh, it doesn't match the requested format. It's not going to allow me to, uh, it's not going to allow me to enter this in because it's not correct. So I'm going to have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now it's fine because I've put this in. But if I do two more digits, it's not going to work because the format's wrong. I'm going to come back to when this will show. So right now we haven't turned on this feature but uh, uh, of Bootstrap, so I'll come back to it. But this error message will be one of the things we want to do. So for now, I'm going to write a regular expression here that's going to guard against people putting in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 uh, to be able to do this. Okay, where else could we do this? We did an email address. We have a phone number street address, we have a city. Well, again, with city, like how long do you need to have for a city name? I went and looked it up. So here's, uh, here's a city name from New Zealand. Are, you know, it, it's really easy to think, okay, I just need what, 10 letters? 10 letters and I should be good for a city name. That's not gonna work. Uh, here's a tweet that I saw and you know, a website whose form says, please enter a valid city. So you've entered an incorrect city name because it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have a regular expression pattern that works for a particular city name in a country where the developer doesn't work. So you have to really be careful with this stuff. I would say, let's not put any kind of regular expression here. On the province, we don't need to do anything because we've already got a list that they can choose from, but postal code we could do. So we could improve the situation for a postal code. We could easily write, so we could say this is a required. So let's write one. So let's say that the pattern is equal to, so think about what a, what a postal code looks like. Well, one of the things we could do is we could help our user. We could put in a placeholder. So let's do um, CBCs is M5W1E6 like this. So we could show them an example of what we're looking for. Okay. So let's say that we're going to allow a postal code to be um, M5W1E6, or let's say we would take it uh, with no spaces. So same thing, same thing, but no space like that. Uh, we would do it in lowercase uh, m5w1e6, etc. So we want all of those different ways to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a regular expression that says this thing has to begin and end followed by either a space or a, I don't know, we could allow someone to put in a dash, for example followed by a digit, followed by A to Z, A to Z, followed by a digit, like that. So they have to enter in a postal code that matches this particular regular expression, and uh, we give them an example to help them 
help them understand what they should put in. If they if they don't type in the correct thing and we have an error, we're going to put an error message in here too. So I'm going to say that the invalid feedback, I want to say enter a valid Canadian postal code, like so. And we'll come back to using this using this in a second. Okay, let's think. Is there anything else in here that I need to do? Um, for the URL, uh, I'm going to do an error message for the URL because in a minute I want to... So let's go to the URL. So right now I say it's optional, but I'm going to add uh, another div. class equals invalid feedback. And I'm going to put in a message here, enter a valid Seneca URL. Um, my Seneca.ca or um, Seneca college.ca, something like that. So give them a little bit of information about the fact that I want them to enter their uh, URL in a particular format. Okay. And I'll save this. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of validation onto this um, using JavaScript. And I want to I want to turn on some error messages when I need them, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to throw um, another script down here and I'm going to do a little bit of work in this script to to do some extra validation. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say when the window loads I want to run this function and what do I want to do? Well, I need to grab my form so document.querySelector and we only have one form in the page, so I could just say form, but we also gave the form a um, grab the appointment form element. Okay, so we now we have our form. And what I want to do with this form is I want to attach an event handler form.onSubmit is equal to a function like that. So when the user submits the form, I want to check if the form is valid. So I don't want to send this to the server until I know that I can trust the data that's going into this form. Okay. So what do I do in here? I'm going to first, step one, I'm going to check to see, so check if the form is valid, which means does it have, has all required input elements. So does, basically are there values for all of these? So I'm going to, I'm going to do an if, I'm going to say if the form I'm going to ask it to check the validity of the form. So check validity is a function, a method that I can call on my form. I'm going to say if it's if it comes back I'm going to add a class to the form. So I'm going to say form. I'm going to grab the class list of the form. And I'm going to tell it to add the class was validated. So this is a bootstrap thing. So if you look over here, was validated. You add was validated to turn on all these extra um, error messages. And well, I'll show you what it looks like and it'll be easier to see. And I'm also going to, after I add the was validated, I'm going to tell this form 
I'm going to prevent the form from doing what it would normally do, which is submitting. And I'm going to return false, saying, in other words, you're not allowed to uh, pass this form on. If to the server. However, if everything checks out and the form is valid, I'm going to return true. I'm going to let the I'm going to let the form go through. Okay? So let's try this. So I load up my form. If I hit submit right now, um, let me get my so I submit my form and I'll show you Let's take a look at my form. Appointment form. So I'm going to say Dave Humphrey, student ID 1234, email address dave at example.com. Phone number, leave it out, 123 Main Street, Toronto, Ontario, <clears throat> M5W1E6. And if I hit submit, please match the requested format. It's it, Now, what, what have I done wrong here? Form ID appointment form. Let's throw a breakpoint in here to see what's going wrong with my going wrong with my code. So I want to understand in my sources, um, let's do the following. When this code runs, I want to I want to set a breakpoint here essentially in code. So I want this to run and you can see what happens as soon as my page reloads, it drops me into it drops me into the page here, into my debugger, so that I can start uh, figuring out what's going wrong. So what I'm going to do now is I can step over the code. I can go one line at a time. So I'm going to step over the code and make sure that I have my form. So form does exist, form.onsubmit. So when the form gets submitted, I want to come in here and I want to do, I want to put a breakpoint on this line to see what's going on. So I'm going to run my code again and I have a bunch of errors here. What are my errors? These are fine. Okay, so when I hit submit, okay, it hasn't gotten to my custom submission yet because my Dave Humphrey student ID one two three four five six seven eight Dave at example dot com one two three Main Street Toronto. <clears throat> Whoops. M5W1E6 and click submit. Please match the requested format. Okay, so this is interesting. So it looks like our um, <clears throat> what have we messed up here? Oh, I have an extra slash s in there for some reason. Save that and let this run. And let's try to type this out again. Whoops. Dave Humphrey, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Toronto. One E six and click submit. Please match the requested format. Let's see what we have going wrong here. A to Z, A to Z, digit, A to Z, A to Z, followed by a space or a dash, followed by a digit, followed by, oh, slash D. That's my problem, slash D. Save this, try one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, 
Okay, we hit submit. Good. Okay, so now what's happened is all of the validation on the form has worked. So all of the required fields were filled out, all the regular expressions have matched, and the browser says, all right, well, this form is, is ready to go. And so what's happened now is it has fallen into this on submit event handler and it's running my first check. So it's going to it's going to look and see if this returns true or false. So form.checkvalidity if I step over this, you can see that the form is valid and it's going to submit this form and it's going to send it. Okay, so um, what I want to do is I want to add a couple more pieces of validation to this so that I can uh, I can see what what's going on. So I'm going to I'm just going to change this a little bit so you can see you can see what things look like. So I'm going to I'm going to put the was validated class onto my form to begin with. So I'll show you what this would look like if I said um, here's my form. I'm going to say form.classlist.add uh, was validated. And you can see here's what the form looks like now. It's got Everything that's valid, it comes up in green. If something was invalid, if we had one of these things that you know wasn't proper, they'd be red and we'd have our error message pop up. Okay. So let's let's add another validation step to this. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna reload the page here and stop it. I want to put in a little bit of custom validation on this. Let me just let this run through and reload this. So what I'd like to do is, let's say that we're satisfied with everything except for one piece of it. There's one piece that we're concerned about, and that is um, we have the required fields. We have, like if there's a problem with the student ID or something like that, but let's say we want to limit the user so that they have to enter a URL that's from a Seneca website. So this is a piece of custom validation that's really hard to do with anything other than JavaScript. I can say that I have a required field. I can say that I have a regular expression on it. I could say, um, you know, that I have this is a URL. But how do I say this is a URL that has to be has to include one of these particular domains? So really what I need to do is I need to write a little bit more code in here. I have to step one, check that the form is valid. And then step two, I need to say, um, check that the URL is valid for a Seneca domain. Okay, so I'm gonna write some extra code. I'm gonna say, if not valid Seneca URL, so I'm gonna write a function and it's going to take the form url.value. So what it's going to do is whatever you put in here, that's what we're going to get in code, the value out of that. We're going to check to see whether or not this thing is valid or not. If it's not valid, then we're going to turn on this error handling like we did above. So I'm going to basically do something similar to this. So to begin with, let's just do that. Let's say event.prevent default and let's return false. So we're going to basically stop the user from being able to do this. So I need to write a function called valid Seneca URL and it takes a URL and what it's going to do is it's going to return true or false depending on whether or not this is a valid URL. So because this URL is optional, if uh, if the URL is the empty string, so if it's empty, we're going to return true. So in other words, um, an empty URL is valid. However, if it's not the empty URL, then what I want to do is I want to parse this URL. So the browser has um, an API for working with URLs. And it's a constructor. You do new URL, and then what it does is it gives you back all this data. So let me let me just show you how it works. If I 
pop into my console here. If I had um, a URL which is equal to HTTPS um, Seneca college.ca slash some web page.html. So I have a URL that looks like that. If I said new URL and I pass it that string, that URL, it's going to give me back an object. And the object has all the different parts of the URL parsed out for me. So it's really difficult to parse a URL yourself. And so it's nice to have these, these helpers like this URL API is going to do for me. And what it does is it tells me, you know, what is the protocol HTTPS? What is the host SenecaCollege.ca? What is the path name, etc.? So what I want is um, I'd like to get the host name. So just SenecaCollege.ca. That's what I want. This part right here. So in my code, what I'm going to do, and if you'll notice if I pass something that's an invalid URL. So let's say I give them something like not uh, URL. This thing is going to throw it's going to throw an exception because it can't make a URL out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to parse par, try and parse the URL. I'm going to try and parse this URL. So I'm going to say let host Oh, let's do this. Let um, parsed URL is equal to new URL and I'll pass in the URL that was given to me. Now that may or may not work. If it fails, it's going to end up down here inside my catch block. So what I'll do in the catch block is I'll just say unable to parse URL. So I'll say console.log unable to parse URL and I'll print out what the URL is, URL is and I'll return false. So is this a valid Seneca URL? No, because I can't I can't deal with it here. So back up here, what if we can parse it? So then the next thing I would do is I need to get the host name. So I'm going to say let host name is equal to parsed URL dot host name. So now let's say that I'm interested in a couple of different ways of um, like there could be all different servers. So somebody could have www dot or let's say I, I basically just want to make sure that my host name ends with my Seneca .ca or Seneca College .ca. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say return. hostname.ends with SenecaCollege.ca, like that. So it'll return true only if you give me a URL that has one of those two things in it. Okay, so let's give this a try. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back here to my page and I'm going to fill this out one more time. Dave Humphrey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dave at example.com. Uh, M5W1E6. Okay, so now I'm going to throw in the URL. So the first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to put in a Google URL HTTPS Google.ca. And I'm going to click submit. Okay, so in my code, you can see that it's gone into the first step of my code, which is um, it's checking to see if this is valid. I'm going to move my breakpoint down here to the second if, and I'm going to let it play. So the first one passed. As far as it's concerned, this form is valid because this was a required field. It's required to be a URL, um, but we're doing the extra validation ourselves. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pass in the form.url.value into our custom function. So I'm going to I'm going to go into my custom custom function and I'm going to check to see what happens. So here I am inside valid Seneca URL. So it's going to do a check and say is this the empty URL? No, it's not. So the next thing it's going to do is it's going to try and parse this URL. Can it parse it? Yes, it parses it. So now parsed URL is an object that has all these different properties on it. And you can see that one of them is the host name google.ca. So I'm going to step over this and now I have a host name, 
google.ca and it's going to return does the host name end with myseneca.ca or my or senecacollege.ca so i step over this and it comes back here and you can see that it's come in and it's false so now what it's going to do is it's going to add a class to this so you can see it puts a class it prevents the default and return false and it come it drops back out here okay so let's figure out why uh, why is this not red? So, oh, because I need to tell it that this, um, I need to tell it that this is invalid because it thinks that it's valid. So what I'm going to do is if the URL comes back and it's not, um, if basically if the form URL is invalid, I have to say, I have to basically tell the browser that this field is invalid and, uh, and why. So I'm gonna say validity, and I'm gonna give up my own custom error message. Please enter a Seneca URL like that and then I'm going to turn this on okay let's try this again you think I would get better at filling this out after doing it this many times but Google.ca and I click submit and whoops this needs to be a space and submit now it's going to come in here it's going to check if the URL is valid and it's not so now what it's going to do is it's going to set my URL to be invalid and then it's going to turn on my on my form it's going to add this was validated class which should make this red so we go here and it worked. So now it's going to stop the form from being, um, it's going to stop the form from going and return false. So I'm going to let it run. Okay, so you can see what's happened here. Everything else in my form is green because they're all valid. However, this one here is not valid. And you can see that it's, let's go back up to my URL. Um, we added a little bit of text, a little error feedback text to say, this is what um, you have to give. You have to give a URL that looks like this or this in order for it to work, okay? So this is good. This is looking good. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna fix this. So if I fix this, http myseneca.ca slash one, two, three. Well, you can see that it still thinks that it's invalid. So we have another bug. The problem we have now is that when the user starts typing on this, we need to we need to keep checking to see whether or not they have fixed it. So I got to go down here and I have to write another little bit of code. So when the user when the user makes a mistake, we check this thing and it's not valid. Here, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start listening for the user to input new text for the URL and revalidate every time. So I want to know when did they get this right? So I'm going to say form.url dot on input is equal to a function So every time they type, I'm going to run this. I'm going to run this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again check to see if uh, what was my function called? My function here. I want to basically take this code right here and try it again. I want to check to see whether or not this is valid. If it's not valid, then what I'm going to do is I'm once again going to set. I'm going to set the 
form the custom validity to be this error message. So basically I'm saying to the browser, this is not, this thing is not valid, okay? So if it doesn't pass our check, it's not valid. However, if it does pass our check, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear, clear the error form.url.set custom validity, and I'm just gonna pass in the empty string. So if you pass the empty string, it means this thing is valid. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this on input handler. I don't want this function to run anymore. So I'm gonna say form.url.on input is equal to null so that it won't keep running this. Let's try this. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's try this form one more time. Dave, um, Google.ca. Okay, so I submit this, it comes down here, it says it's not valid it sets it as invalid, it adds the um, overlay to say what is and isn't valid, and it registers this input, it registers this on input, and I'll throw a breakpoint in here so you can see what happens. So I'm gonna hit play. So now I go here and I type a backspace, and you can see what it did is it triggered the input event, so I've typed new text and it's inputted new text, and so now it's gonna recheck to see if this thing is valid. So is it valid? No, it's not valid, so it's gonna set it equal to invalid. And it's gonna keep doing this until I'm gonna set a breakpoint down here inside my else. So now I'm gonna delete, whoops, let me get rid of this breakpoint. I'll, I'll start deleting and I'll say HTTP uh, www.myseneca.ca slash um, foo. Um, wait a second. MySeneca.ca slash foo. Please enter a Seneca. What have I done wrong here? It's going to test to see if this is a valid. Let's go back here and see. Let's see why this is breaking. So I'm going to step into my code. The URL is equal to my seneca.ca slash foo, that looks good. So we go in here, we parse it, we get the host name. The host name is equal to myseneca.ca. So we come down here and we look, if I highlight this section of the code right here and put my mouse over it or copy it, I could just go over into the console and run it. If I run this, host name is not, whoops, no, I can't, that's unfortunate. What's it going to give me here? It's going to give me false. What have I missed? Have I got a typo in here? Obviously I have a typo. You're probably looking at it right now saying, I can totally see the typo, Dave. Let me try, let me try it with the other one. No, I have another bug in here. What is my issue? Host name dot ends with. Okay, let's let's try this. I get the host name. Host name is that host. That returns true. Hostname ends with SenecaCollege.ca. So we go back to the sources. And we step through, then we go over this. Return ends with. Hmm. I know, well, this is ridiculous. What am I missing? Turn. CA. Well, I don't see it, and I don't know what I'm missing. 
uh, let's do if host name Let's do this just to see. Okay, we submit it, it breaks. I'm gonna change it to, <clears throat> let's pause this for a second. MySeneca.ca, there, okay. So, <laughs> I don't understand what I was doing wrong. So. Now it's going to come out here and it's going to clear this because the, the, so if I go like this, you can see that this is now valid. If I change this to com and I try and submit this, it's going to come back here and it's going to be invalid, right? So if I change this back to CA, it's going to come in and it's going to say that it's valid. So what we've been able to do here is we've been able to specify an extra JavaScript function which is going to allow us to say what what is and isn't valid in the data that's coming out of this form which is great because we can now do required we can do url we can do telephone but we could also write our own function to be able to pass this data in uh, okay i want to show you one last thing before i end and that is i wrote a little tiny web server and i'm not going to go into all the details of this you're going to learn about this in uh, 322 web 322 so you can um, spend more time on, uh, looking at it in then in that course but i wanted to just have something that would allow us to print out when we submit a form so we could see what it's doing so i ha what i have here is i'm just going to uh, run my web server and it's going to start up a server at localhost 8765 and I'm going to I'm going to throw that into a page over here and it's going to give us our form. So let's let's fill this out one last time. You're probably sick of this, but Dave Humphrey 12345678 email address dave at example.com phone number I'll leave it blank 123 main street City, Toronto, uh, postal code M5W1E6, optional URL, I'll leave it blank for now. You've seen me do it enough times. This is the description, okay? And I'm gonna click on submit. And when I click submit, it sends my data via uh, the web server and I get this on the web server. So what the web server receives and the code where it's receiving this is right here. What it's going to do is it's going to receive the data on the body of the request. And you can see that what my code is doing is it's printing everything out that came in from the form. So I have a first name, a last name, a student ID, an email, an empty phone number, etc. all the way down, all the pieces that have been included. And um, this is what I would then work with on the server side. But what comes in to me is already clean, like the province is already clean, the uh, postal code is in the correct format, etc. So being able to do all this data validation on the client side, on the browser, before we send this into the server is great because the data we get on the server side is going to be going to be a lot cleaner. I'll pause there. I'm going to post this code for you to look at and you can spend some time trying to build um, build it out or extend it or play with the ideas that are in it.